Morning. morning. A few announcements this morning. First of all, uh, today we're once again going to be taking a noisy offering uh, for school personal care and baby kits for Lutheran World Relief. Thanks for all the noise you made last week. And if you want to make some more noise this week with a noisy offering, uh, that would be uh, great. Flood project, bucket project is underway. Again, check downstairs at the Burton entryway. There's a nice little chart. But if you want to uh, take an item or contribute an item, and uh, we're continuing in our sermon series, putting it all together, where the focus is trying to make our faith active. And today's a great example of that. And that we're talking about a beautiful feet, or as I. Decided more of the sermon came more to shape any faithful feet in an even better way to talk about. We'll be talking specifically about our feet and faith and how those things go together. That covers our major announcements. Uh, but make sure you 
check through your news and notes for more details and information. Oh, also, we are a new no, we have a podcast and it's uh, now it's on Spotify. We also passed muster and we are now on Apple Podcasts as well. So, right now, it's mostly sermons, and uh, but we're hoping to develop some more content sometime, uh, some sort of unique content for the podcast. But that is another way uh, to pay attention or listen to a, a sermon if you can't be here or for any number of reasons. So we're, we're all over uh, the interwebs nowadays. So check it out. Uh, I think that covers our announcements. We'll begin our service with the ring is a bell and our opening. <laughs> And I pray you for the house of mercy 
Your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. The Lord lifts up the humble. Yes, the right. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. For it is pleasant and a song of praise is taken. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the broken body. And finds out their wounds. He determines the number of stars. He is for all the nations. Great is the Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. And the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord lifts up the home. Ezekiel chapter 18. And uh, if you ever want more information on the book of Ezekiel, pay attention in a couple weeks. We'll have a three minute Bible summary on Bible 180 of Ezekiel. Uh, but uh, Ezekiel chapter 18. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers had eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For the injustice that he, has, that he has done, he shall die. 
Again, when a wicked person turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he shall save his life. Because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his way, declared the Lord God. Repent, and turn from all your transgressions, lest your iniquity be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed, and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone declares the Lord God, so turn and live. This is the word of the Lord. This lesson is from Romans chapter 10. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing all his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard. And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question. And if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from man? And they discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe it? But if we say from man, we are afraid of the crowd, and they all hold the John to the trough. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Confess our faith with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ. The only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God, God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, I of all things remain, who brought us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. And was crucified also for us on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I will be in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is by the Father. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for remission of sins, and I hope for the resurrection of the dead, 
think about the Flintstones because your feet, right, are your everyday vehicle that move you from place to place. As the old saying goes, location, location, location. And where you are makes a gigantic difference in your life. Uh, there's a reason why coaches spend so much time in practice working on footwork. And so let's also focus on doing some faithful, fancy footwork. Uh, in Bible ABCs, it's a great YouTube video series aimed at preschoolers. We talked about Caleb this week, and the reason I bring him up is because it's very relevant. Caleb was faithful for a very simple reason. When God told Caleb to walk into Canaan, he was ready to do it. It may not sound like fancy footwork, but simply walking when and where God tells us to is a big part of our faith. When the Israelites left Egypt, they didn't have to do a whole lot, but they did have to walk out of Egypt because God had already prepared the way, and they just walked when he told them to. When God parted the waters of the Red Sea, the Israelites just had to walk across. When Caleb and the Israelites were about to go into the promised land, God said, just walk in. I'll give you the land, and I'll give you the victory. You just trust me and go in. And Caleb was ready to get to step in, and eventually he did go into the promised land. Apparently, all it really takes to be a hero of the faith is to work that fitness track. Well, faithful Christian footwork is walking where, when, and where God tells us to. Uh, a lot of times in our life we come into scary situations in, in our faith life and we try to avoid them. That, that problem's too big, God. I, I can't step into that. I, I can't go where you tell me to or do what you say. I think I'd rather go this way. But remember Caleb. Have confidence, not in yourself, but in the Lord. He can take care of you. Just go where he says to you. And you've got yourself a pair of faithful people. A, a big part of sports or simply of life is showing up. Even if you're only an average athlete, simply consistently showing up to practice will make you a much better player. In college, I remember some of my freshman buddies that I first met my first year bailed out after one year or a semester. It really wasn't a very big surprise because they never or barely ever went to class. They never showed up, and so I don't think anybody was real surprised when they weren't there the next semester. Uh, one of the biggest reasons people get fired is for not showing up or showing up late. You see, showing up is half the battle. And Showing up with the Christian faith is practically half the battle as well. Perhaps the most obvious place to show up is simply uh, showing up at church. Uh, right? You show up or the bears will get you. No, it's, it's even if you're only paying half attention when you come to church, chances are God can still use that. I'm not saying only pay half attention. But just showing up is half the battle, right? And while you really should show up at church, that's not really our focus for today. Rather, we're focusing on the fact of where we ought to be, or where our church ought to be going, not in coming to this building, but where we ought to be going when we leave this building. For starters, uh, I think that right here in Westwood is exactly where we ought to be. I think God had a plan and a reason and I think there's lots of, even we plain things we can figure out without needing uh, any more direction than God's word, that there's lots that we can be doing here uh, in Westwood. There, there needs to be churches all over the world, right? They need to be in the country, they need to be in the suburbs, and everywhere else, but I, I feel grateful and I'm happy to be here in the city. And I wish we could plant even more LCMS churches uh, in the city. But while, we, while we're here, we shouldn't just uh, twiddle our thumbs, right? It's, I'm not saying it's not important. I'm saying, I'm not saying the important thing is to drive here to this location, although, like I said, it's a good thing. 
but we've actually got to not just have church here in Westwood, but be here in Westwood. And I think we are. I think you know, we always got room to improve, but I think we are here and we're doing stuff. And that's, I believe, what God wants us to be doing. Jesus tells us to love our neighbor, right? That's like pretty essential when Jesus says that. Well, we just have to have two commandments. Love the Lord and God and love your neighbor and yourself. It's more complicated than that, but if you want to boil it down to two, those are the two. Well, it's kind of hard to love your neighbor. If you never talk to them, right? If you never see them or interact with them, how in the world can you possibly love them very well? Uh, I'm, in a, you know, the very literal sense of the word, I'm very blessed in my home to have some really great neighbors. Um, but I didn't realize that because we didn't talk for talk a whole lot for a while. It wasn't until well, my tree fell in my neighbor's yard that I realized how great and thankfully forgiving. Uh, my neighbors work. So maybe maybe you aren't as lucky as me, or maybe you don't have great neighbors, but even if you don't have great neighbors, you can certainly be a great neighbor. It's also important to remember as we talk about our feet that God can guide us uh, wherever we go. Wherever our first steps lead us, the Lord can be there with us. Just this last week, again, I prayed up to its relevant We've been doing a Bible 180, which is a YouTube thing. It's a three-minute series of all the books in the Bible. This week was Jeremiah. In that book, the Israelites are punished and sent into exile, or at least much of it is talked about in that happens. But even when they are forcibly led off into exile, God reminds them, I'm going with you. You're not an exile an accident, and I have got a purpose for you. There's a very famous uh, there's a very uh, famous part of the Bible that says Bible verse that's quoted a lot. You've seen a lot of things it's from Jeremiah. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Now, what you probably didn't realize is that God tells His people this right after he's punished them and sent them into a, well, Babylonian time out. Um, they are in new and hostile territory, and, and they are, God gives them this wonderful promise. Um, I've got good plans for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Now, some of these very folks were probably marched there, perhaps in chains, Undoubtedly, they endured hardship along the way, and once they got to Babylon, there's by some persecution and loneliness, at the very least. But God says, I'm right with you there in Babylon. Remember, I've got good plans for you. Plans to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. I'm with you, even though you're not where you want to be. God can be with us. In fact, God is with us. Even when we're not where we want to be. Maybe you're not where you want to be right now. Maybe you don't like the job that you've got. You're frustrated with something in your home life. Maybe you're frustrated with, with sex magic or, or politics or the injustice of this world. But God's got you here for a reason. Even if you don't know, God gives us a, a money back guarantee that he can use you wherever your feet are, even if you're not sure why you're there. God's got a good plan. Uh, he can help you. He can work on you. And he can use you for his kingdom. You just got to you got to listen, and he promises he's going to lead you step by step. Of course, uh, it's worth repeating that you got to listen to that. That's an important part of that. Uh, and then there are many attack promises attached to that if we're paying attention to him. And so, um, since uh, we're talking about feet today, we've been coming up with a challenge every week. We've got a, a new challenge. Uh, and that's to take a walk. Use your feet and take a walk. There's got to be somewhere you can walk. 
And if it's cooler fall weather, and as long as you've got your allergy medication, uh, there's not much more beautiful of a time of year to walk around than that than right now. And that's my challenge to you this week to uh, a prayer. Now, people may have, I don't really know, I'm not that well connected in Christmas. People may have different ideas of what prayer walk means, but I need pretty much what it just said pray and walk. Pretty simple. Before um, you, you start uh, walking, before you even start walking, I think it's important to say a prayer and, and to read some scriptures to kind of get your head in the right place before you get your feet moving in the right direction. I put some suggestions of uh, verses uh, to read up here, and you can certainly make a whole list or do some research on your own or well, open your Bible and start reading it practically right before. And then, after you say a little prayer and read a little scripture, and I, you can do it as long as you want, but I'm just saying two minutes, maybe. Uh, then, go take a walk. And the purpose of this walk, remember, is, is not just to exercise, but also to pray. Now, that doesn't mean you ignore someone who comes up and wants to talk to you. You know, maybe that's an answer to your prayer. Maybe God wants you to talk to that person today. Uh, but, uh, the key thing to remember is, is to be talking to and praying to the Lord. And even if you're having a conversation with someone else, you might say a quick prayer, Lord, if there's anything you want me to say, leave me. It's under your Holy Spirit. Uh, I think, again, it's important to, to be intentional and include a prayer beforehand and read some scripture before you head out. And before I suggested it, I tried it at work one day, and I, mean, I just did it. Why not walk? And uh, I think it actually, you know, it really helped me even in that day uh, to help me to, to focus on what I wanted to and then walking around and praying for a variety of different things. I saw political signs, so I started praying for the nation. I saw, you know, I know some people probably were youth walking, I know too. I saw how some people I know, and so I prayed for them. And uh, I was trying to be. Uh, Thinking not just of what I was doing, but of what the Lord might want, and of what the Lord had, and of God's kingdom. And again, it wasn't that complicated. It didn't take me more than a half hour to do the whole thing. Uh, and I, that's why I challenge uh, to you this week is to take a walk and have say a prayer or be scripture prayer and do some praying while you walk. And you might be inspired uh, to people to, to pray for, or maybe even to talk to. And it might help you uh, focus it. I, I suspect that God will do something. If you give him 20 minutes or a half an hour, he will do something worthwhile with your time. The world after all, right? We all know, I think, we all say, or, or if we're on Facebook, we like those things that say the world needs more prayer, so let's not just like it, let's do a little of it, let's pray a little bit, and might as well get some exercise while you do so. This world needs more prayer, and also we all, the world needs more Jesus as well. So take a walk from the Lord this week, and always go where he leads you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Continue with some music and a reminder that we have the offering box in the back, which is very simple and secure to give.
Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Help us, O oh Lord, remember the faithful who loved and served you and who now rest from their labor. Bring us with them to that most blessed day when together we shall dwell in your presence on high forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant to us all good things needful for this body and life and profitable for our salvation. And keep from us all things harmful but sustained in time of want, and guarded in time of prosperity, we may endure to the day of our Lord's coming, and be judged worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. 
Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Not this week, but next week is planning on coming back. Um, so just kind of, I don't think that'll mean a whole lot different for most of us. Just uh, they'll be back in worship uh, after we are. Usually, there's no one for that. We don't see, we don't really run into them on the way out of church. They're not here for more like 10:30. Uh, but uh, we'll heads up, they'll be coming back uh, to worship in the sanctuary uh, next week. So that's I think a uh, blessing, but also just. Continue with our, our closing hymn. 